Welcome back to another video with Hugh James uh, and I'm back in the Cardiff office today uh, and I'm joined by Catherine and we're going to be talking about wills and trusts. So thank you very much for coming and joining us Catherine. My pleasure, uh, thank you Scott. For talking to us uh, and as always we know there's going to be great information coming from uh, anybody in the team at Hugh James. So tell us a little bit about your role uh, here at Hugh James. So my name is Catherine Griffiths, I'm a partner in the firm's wills and estates planning department. Um, I qualified back in 2010, so um, I've been drafting wills for a period of over 13 years, so hopefully I know what I'm talking about. No doubt. Yeah, I think when it comes to wills, lots of people have a perception that they don't need a will. Naturally, if something happens to me, my house assets will naturally be um, passed on to the right people. Is that the case? a common misconception. Um, in some cases it's true. Um, so with the intestacy rules uh, there are a set of rules that deal with the distribution of your estate if you pass away in the UK without having a valid will. In the event of you being married or being in a civil partnership and you don't have any children, under the intestacy rules your estate will be left to your surviving spouse. But if you're married or in a civil partnership and you have children, that's not the case. So your surviving spouse in that situation would inherit a portion of your estate, but a percentage of the estate would also be left to your children. So consequently, it could be the case that your surviving spouse doesn't have enough mm. money, but that your children have too much yeah. too soon. When it comes then to um, owning properties with, with somebody, if you own a property with somebody as a joint tenant, upon the passing of one joint tenant, the surviving joint tenant will automatically inherit that property by the survivorship rules. However, that doesn't apply for a property that's owned with somebody else as a tenant in common, where you own a specific share of the property with somebody, or in respect of any assets that you own on a sole basis. So if you think about ICES, mm. they're owned on an individual basis. Yeah. So the only way really of ensuring that your estate will go to the people who you want to inherit is to make a will. Yeah, it, it, it's complicated in terms of married couples. How complicated does it get if you're not married? Well, under the intestacy rules, there is no provision whatsoever for unmarried people. So if you're cohabiting with somebody, the only way to ensure that your partner can benefit from your estate is to make a will. So there's no such thing as a common law marriage. That concept just doesn't exist. Mm. That, and that's, that's something I've heard regularly. We've been living together for so long. Yeah. You know, both my, uh, Both our names are on the bills or the bank account or whatever it is and they just make the um, assumption it, that yeah, people assume. we're jointly legally binded in some yeah. instances so that will naturally transfer across across but as you said clearly not the no. case um, and I think today this modern era family circumstances become even more complex again don't they you know with um, previous marriages children from different relationships so where do people stand if that's the case in their situation yeah of course so i think the concept of a blended family is on the increase um, with my situation i'm in a blended family um, so my family consists of my husband my daughter my two stepdaughters so the intestacy rules don't provide for any stepchildren which is why i have a will in place um, there are various ways of providing for you know, a new spouse, a new civil partner and children from a previous relationship within a will. So one example that I can give to you, Scott, is in respect of maybe including something called a life interest trust within a will, um, which then enables the surviving spouse to have the use of the assets with the children then inheriting your estate okay. after the surviving spouse passes away. And I suppose the benefit of including something like that within a will is to ensure that your surviving spouse is catered for for the rest of his days or her days, yeah. but that the children then ultimately do inherit the estate and that the estate is protected in terms of any third party claims by way of the surviving spouse marrying somebody else. Mm. Yeah, no, that's that's really interesting. I've never heard of that. Uh, that's uh, that, that's a, a great piece of information. Um, 
What about tax benefits then? We all love a tax benefit if we can oh, be as efficient as possible with tax. Are there any tax benefits of, to making a will? Yeah, so a will can be utilised as an inheritance tax mitigation tool. So if you think of the spousal exemption, if you leave everything to your spouse in a will, that then qualifies for the spousal exemption, meaning that there's no inheritance tax then to pay. Mm. Um, so conversely, with the intestacy rules, if you're married and you have children, your surviving spouse will only inherit the first £320,000 from the estate, then half of anything which is on top of that. Okay. The other half is inherited by the children, and that then is taxed at a rate of 40% on, a, on anything over your nil rate band, which is £325,000. Additionally, your estate could benefit from something called the residence nil rate band, which will give the estate an additional allowance of £175,000, but only in certain circumstances. So if your estate is worth less than £2 million, and you also have to have a property that you leave to direct descendants, so they could be your children and your grandchildren. So a properly drawn up will will ensure that those allowances will then be applicable to your estate. Mm. Um, there is also an option then of leaving 10% of your estate to qualifying charities. And if you do that, any resultant inheritance tax that's paid on the rest of your estate is reduced from 40% to 36%. So that then provides a tax saving. Mm. Oh, okay, and benefits the charity of as course, well, obviously. So yeah. it's doing it's a, a good philanthropic thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, I think those those numbers twenty years ago, people would have thought don't even need to think about that. They they're huge, but the way house prices are increasing Precisely. and you know value of things is increasing uh, in today's age, th those numbers can quite easily be reached. You know, and to 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 not be tax efficient when it comes to a will, you know, paying 40% uh, yeah. over that uh, 325,000 you know, is a lot. It's a tax and it's effectively a tax on something that you might have already paid tax on yeah. during your lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, so a lot of the viewers are passionate about charitable causes and you mentioned it there then. Um, so um, can you expand a little bit more on what you've just touched on in terms of leaving something within your will to charities? Yeah, of course, it's a worthwhile consideration. And the only way for you to leave a legacy to a charity after your passing is to make a will. So there's no provision for charities under the intestacy rules. Leaving something to a charity within a will is very straightforward. You've got the option of either specifying that you want to leave something specific to them. So for example, your house contents or your personal possessions. Conversely, what you could do is leave a money legacy to um, a charity. So it could be a case of you leaving £10,000 to the charity. Um, or you've got the option of leaving a percentage of your estate, for example, 20%. You can also, within the will, to a certain extent, um, specify what the charity should do with your money. So lots of people put in provisions such as, I want the charity to use the money for research purposes. So long as you're not too restrictive, that will work. Yeah, it's... Um, it, it's it's certainly beneficial if you've got a particular interest veterans and the veteran community may you know want to leave it to uh, a military type charity yes. and specifically to i want it to go to benefit in veteran homelessness or you know um veteran employment or whatever it might be so it's, yeah, it's great course. that you can really um uh, pinpoint down in that um so time wise how long does it take to make a will it's relatively straightforward and it's not going to take months you're looking at weeks i do understand obviously that people lead very busy lives and i think it's probably fair to say that the concept of making a will is probably overlooked by lots of people yeah I, I get told all the time by my clients that they've thought about doing a will but they just put it off we obviously at Hill James try to make the process as easy as possible and we've got various options ranging from a do-it-yourself option to a consultation with a solicitor. Um, so say if you know somebody watching this would prefer to have a consultation, what we then tend to do, we try to capture all the instructions either during a face-to-face -face meeting in the office or these days over Teams or over the telephone. We then, following that consultation, get the will prepared, say within about 10 working days. And once that will is approved, the final version is then sent to the client together with instructions as to how to properly sign the will. So it's a, it's a really, really simple process. Mm, yeah, just 
needs a little bit of time for the process to, to follow yeah, through. Yeah, of course, like so, anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some great information there, and I certainly learned uh, a couple of things uh, that I hadn't even considered in terms of uh, wills, particularly keen on the tax efficiency uh, part of things. So that's uh, that's something I'll certainly be following up on. Um, just to wrap us up then, uh, Catherine, what would be your top tips when it comes to uh, wills of trust for uh, the viewers? What I would probably say, um, especially with the viewers, they may already have a will in place. So the Ministry of Defence do recommend that armed forces personnel do make a, a will before deployment. That sometimes isn't followed through, or even if it is followed through, it might well be the case that you've made a will, but your circumstances have changed. So what I would recommend is that every five years or so, if you have a will in place, get that copy out and ensure that the estate still goes to the people who you want to benefit um, and in the event that you need to change it we'll speak with the solicitor yeah absolutely it's uh, so worthwhile doing because you know in the event that something happens to you you aren't there to help that process um, go through correctly so Precisely. yeah no it's brilliant. normally too late absolutely that time. yeah absolutely some great advice there uh catherine uh, some really useful information and as i said i've certainly learned uh, a couple of things uh, there today so, so thank I you very much for my that pleasure. Um, thank you very much for taking the time out of the day uh, to come and join us uh, and if anybody uh, the viewers want to um, find out some more information they can go over to the veteran owned uk website uh, and the Hugh James page on the Partners and Supporters page there uh, and find out some information directly. Or you can head over to the Hugh James uh, website. Just put that in uh, your search engine and that'll come up as well. So thanks very much for joining us and we'll catch you in the next video.